Francisco, I'm, I'm going to proceed with a, a presentation um, for those that are uh, participating on the web. And uh, if we move to uh, our first slide, which would be the collaboration strategy slide, and, uh, and look just to build that whole slide out. We, uh, the best and brightest minds in Cisco worked for a number of weeks uh, to, uh, to come up with this slide. Um, uh, for us to be able to articulate what is a collaboration strategy uh, in a single sense. And uh, if, if you have a look at the left-hand side there, it, it talks about the market transitions. And these market transitions we've been discussing now for probably a couple of years. Um, and they've been highlighted by uh, Lindsay and by Aaron today in terms of things like cloud. The influence of cloud on the collaboration strategy cannot be understated. Um, uh, we see a massive transition of our existing on-premise customer base uh, into the cloud for the purposes of simplicity. Um, you know, we, we, the, the, the telecommunications providers like telecom can provide everything in a collaboration piece out of the cloud. And so we're moving from on-prem to cloud-delivered infrastructure, uh, uh, certainly. The other thing that's been, of course, massive uh, is uh, the impact upon mobility. We'll thank our good friends at uh, Apple for all that's transpired in uh, putting smartphones in all our hands and the impact that that has. But there's an expectation now by everybody that I talk to, and I get the opportunity to talk to some thousands of people each year, that says their mobile device is uh, their preferred productivity device. Uh, they've moved away from uh, PCs doesn't got away entirely, but the mobile device is now their preferred productivity device. The other thing that's going on, of course, is the advent of video communications. And to give you some idea of the video communications wave that's going on, I would expect within this next 12-month period across Australia and New Zealand as, as uh, one region that we manage together, we will see video revenues equal to what we have seen in our voice revenues. So when we're talking about IP voice, I think we could probably say that uh, January 2000 was the commencement of uh, our efforts to, to bring IP voice to market, and so we've been in this market for 12 years. Video we've been in essentially since the acquisition of Tamburg, a little bit before that, so around three or four years. So in three or four years, we've built a business that is equal in size and proportion in video as what it took us 12 years to build in IP voice. And, and the reason for that is simple. The capacity for... Uh, people to see each other and resolve matters and the productivity equation in being able to click, see someone, handle the, the, the query or question within a business and move on is what's driving that momentum in video. There's also something that's very, very near and dear to my heart uh, and I, I know that many organisations are still watching this with interest and making tentative steps and that's the advent of uh, the social enterprise. Uh, I, I happen to, this is a personal uh, uh, area for me which I'm very, very passionate about. I think the social enterprise and, and the movement towards that is going to be very, very large indeed. The capacity for us to form communities, share information, keep up to date in a social enterprise is good. And that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean putting Facebook into your organisation. It actually means taking some of those concepts around wikis and blogs and utilising that in order to get good content, good information in a timely manner throughout your organisation. So that's the market transition piece uh, that's been going on, and that's having a very, very impact, a very large impact upon the enterprise. Below that, we have the, the trends. Mobility is directly related to bring your own device. You know, everybody's saying, I would like to bring in my Apple device or my Android device or whatever it might be into an organisation and have that be a productive uh, a device with all of my applications sitting on that. And uh, many vendors, us, Citrix, Microsoft, everybody's talking about bring your own device. If I might encourage the audience to consider this though, the bring your own device is, is a transient trend. And by that I mean it's actually not going to matter soon what the device is. It's going to be bring your own application, or more specifically, bring your own browser. There isn't a major uh, a software development company today that isn't building their entire software suite to fit within a browser. So essentially, if you have a browser, and that can be Safari or Mozilla or uh, Internet Explorer or whatever it is, but if you can get access to a browser, you're going to be able to get access to the full range of software and productivity applications. And so that bring your own device, the device bit we're managing right now, browser will be the, the outcome there. We're also working very, very hard on, on um, business application integration. 
what customers around the world are telling us is that you know they don't want to be alt tabbing out to uh, you know another application in order to do their IM and presence and 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 click to call and click to video. What they're saying is we want that to be embedded into our existing workflows. Most organizations actually run in Oracle or SAP or Salesforce.com and the capacity for us to be able to deliver a unified workspace, presence, calling, video and all that sort of stuff in Oracle or in SAP so that they don't have to change what it is that they're doing is going to be really, really important. And the other thing that we're seeing is pertaining to collaboration, it is becoming less influenced by IT and more influenced upon the business. And by that, when we look at the, the next um, uh, marker there in the slide across, you know, we, we have three defined areas of the organization that we talk to. As little as three years ago, 100% of my time uh, as a collaboration person was spent dealing with the enterprise architects, the IT people, about you know, what it is that we need to do. And they are very, very important. And, and by no means are we, uh, we minimizing our commitment to the enterprise architects to understand how they build a collaboration strategy because it's uh, the enterprise architects that are under the most pressure. But, but that is now only about 50% of my time. 50% of my time in collaboration is spent either at the board level, at the C level, or with the users about what it is that they want in a collaboration strategy. It's probably pertinent for me to, to talk about my own, my own personal experience. So, so I'm, in, uh, I'm in sunny Melbourne today, but I'm actually, and that's in Victoria, the state of Victoria. I actually live uh, in the regions of uh, New South Wales. So I am some hours of driving away from our head office in Sydney. And uh, I, I live in, in a regional location um, on, uh, on a couple of thousand acres, actually. And uh, I expect and I need to have all of my collaboration tools available to me when I'm traveling here in Melbourne and at home uh, delivered uh, to my study. And so my personal experience about what I need, when I need it, you know, where that's going to be, becomes a really big impact upon what we've done with our own collaboration strategy. I have access to video from my home, uh, either via a software client on my PC, uh, through my mobile phone, and from a dedicated video unit. I have access to social software, where I have a community, which is the team that I manage, and we share all of our information in there. I have all of these tools wherever I'm going to be, and that's the contribution of the user piece. And we can see the different business imperatives that everybody has across those three tiers of people that we need to consider with a collaboration strategy. And one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, requests that uh, Genoa Telecom made of me today is to not so much talk about you know, what it is in terms of a product piece, but what collaboration does. And if we move across to the, the value piece and the outcomes, these are the things that collaboration delivers. It delivers productivity in a mobile world. Uh, it allows us to be able to get people who are in the head office that have expertise in uh, uh, networking and present them as video to anywhere in the world. Um, it increases our customer contact and our customer intimacy by being able to do that. We have extraordinarily flexible workplaces. I'm as productive in, in any environment anywhere as what I am if I'm sitting in the office. And that's a, a remarkable outcome that we've been able to, to achieve. So, so that's a collaboration strategy um, that we like to talk, talk with our customers about. And what we find that there isn't, there isn't a one size fits all to a strategy. And, and there isn't a project, a single project that will deliver it. For everybody that's given consideration to what do we need to do around flexible workplaces, our mobility productivity, you actually need to put a strategy in place that is likely to be a multi-year strategy whereby you say, right, I'm going to start here, I'm going to, I'm going to deliver uh, a mobile strategy, I'm going to move that into uh, you know, a hot desking moment, I'm going to add social to that. You need to, you need to think about these things over one, two, three, and four years and, and work your way through. Trying to do a, a bing bag exercise uh, is probably not going to work very well and we haven't seen that be very, very successful at all. Uh, okay, I'll just move to, to the next slide, which kind of highlights for those people that are involved in IT, you know, what we're up against here. You know, IT in, in this workspace evolution that's going on are responsible for security and compliance. You know, they have to have um, 
uh, the complexity in mind, multiple operating systems with multiple hardware form factors and trying to deliver a, you know, a consistent user experience and a quality experience across that is a really, really difficult thing to do. And no matter where I go, there isn't anybody saying, well, it just so happens that uh, the CFO has come down and visited me and uh, he's thrown me a couple of million dollars to resolve that matter. That, uh, that just doesn't seem to be the case. Everyone's trying to do this on what are quite thin uh, uh, budgets. Interestingly, I, I did read last week that uh, there was a survey done of some of the larger uh, organisations in America, some 250 organisations, with, with an annual IT spend of $56 billion. Uh, and they spoke to all of the CIOs of all of these businesses and said, so, so what are your priorities in the near term, in the next 12 months, of that $56 billion, what are you going to be spending your money on? And the interesting thing was, 63% of that $56 billion in America was going to be spent right in this topic. It's going to be spent on collaboration and the workspace evolution. And that's a little bit related to the cost piece. What we found is, since the financial crisis of 2008, organisations have got very, very good at controlling their costs. It's actually down to a fine art. And everybody's kind of aware of now that if they're to, to try and get momentum in the marketplace and for us to see a global um, uh, uplift in, in stock prices and in productivity, they're going to have to focus now on the efficiency and productivity of their people. And that's exactly where collaboration is. So we're seeing now that collaboration is becoming the number one spend priority by organisations because they're really, really focused on the people and how they extract efficiencies and productivity from them because the cost equation has been worked for a number of years and it's been expired. Everyone knows how to balance their costs. We'll just move to the next slide and uh, we'll, uh, we'll build that out. And I think this probably highlights the, uh, the complexity of the situation. You know, the users and the executives are saying, I want to be able to have access to any device, uh, I want to be able to, to do it anywhere, and I want the full suite of everything that uh, is available to us. And IT having responsibility for, well, actually, I've got to lock all that down uh, and, and try and make that work. And we call that, you know, the unified workspace. And this is what we've been working on uh, to develop so that, that becomes possible. And our answer to that is contained in the, in the next slide, which is you have to look at the architectural layer. It is almost impossible for you to try and manage a unified workspace if you're focused on the device or the application and trying to keep up with this revision of 10.6.2 with that particular revision of 4.1.8 and try and measure it at the client side is probably not going to work. We, we have a passionate belief that says there is, there is a ubiquity of the network that exists where we connect to everything. No matter what the device is, no matter where we are, the network is the point of connection. And so if we get an architectural network layer right, then we'll be in a position to be able to handle the environment and its changeability right now, and that means we don't care if it's Windows 8 or Windows XP or anything in between. We don't care if it's Android. We don't care if it's iOS. We don't care if it's Oracle. We don't care if it's Samsung. We don't care if it's Lenovo. If we manage the environment at the network layer through that architecture, then we can actually provide all of these wonderful tools in the manner in which people would like to consume them. So that kind of concludes my short presentation on a collaboration strategy. I hope that's helped. Um, I do encourage everybody to, to uh, uh, access these slides and have a look at that single slide as the basis for if we are going to embark upon a collaboration journey, you know, how do we put it together and what are the outcomes that we're trying to achieve and then drive that back to where is my investments already and how do I then tweak my architecture to future-proof the outcomes as we progress down the, the collaboration path, which is fast becoming the thing that every organisation is prioritising their spend upon. Thanks very much for your time.